Well, good morning, everyone, again at CHC. This is Uncle Jay, still, for our second devotion in the series of the life of Lamech and his lessons. Uh, this class is called Lamech's Big Mouth. Remember, we talked about how Lamech was an unforgiving loudmouth. Well, we're going to see how that's the case today, all right? So yesterday we looked at the two different kinds of people that were coming from Adam and Eve. On the side of Abel, the side of Seth, really, um, was one group of people, one kind of people that was being developed. And on the side of uh, Cain, there was another kind of people who were being developed. So when you come down from Cain, and then you come down to one of his sons, who was Lamech. Lamech had a whole bunch of sons um, had three sons in particular who were very, very busy in the things of the world and were very intelligent and capable people. Um, and they were uh, introducing things into the world that the world would begin to use, um, not to glorify God, but to bring violence into the world and to only glorify man so that man was doing what was right in their own eyes and not what was right in the eyes of God. But on the side of Seth, that's where people um, were mainly trying to follow God and do things his way. That was the family that was being developed. So this class is about Lamech's big mouth. And it's interesting because um, when you think about all the different things that the Bible could have put in about Lamech, there's only one verse that tells us what he said exactly. And it's really interesting. And it's in Genesis chapter Four. Okay, so Genesis chapter 4 talks about Lamech. Lamech, it says um, in verse 19, had two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other was Zillah. And from Ada and Zillah came um, a number of family members. In particular, we talked last week about Jabel, Jubal, Tubal Cain and also Naama. Remember, Jabal was the one who um, was the rancher and he had the tents and Jubal was the one with the music. Tubal Cain, remember? Why would you name your son with the word Cain in it? Um, and it was because Lamech was going to be not just like Cain, but he saw himself as being even more important than Cain. And he also had a daughter uh, named Zillah. So when we keep moving down, it says in verse 23, now we get those actual words of Lamech in verse 23. It says that Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah. Lamech said to his wives. That tells you a little bit about Lamech. He didn't join and cleave to one wife. He had two wives, which was not what it was that God intended, as Jesus, <clears throat> excuse me, as Jesus tells us in the New Testament. But in verse 23, of uh, Genesis chapter 4, Lamech says to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech. And actually the way this verse should be read is like this. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. You wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech. For I have slain a man for wounding me and a young man for hurting me. So Lamech is... But pretty much that's poetry in Hebrew. This is actually called the Song of Lamech, when we look very closely at the, the, uh, the text. So Lamech is saying this kind of song, this kind of poem, saying, that, saying to his wives, somebody who wounds me or hurts me, I kill them. That's the kind of person that Lamech was. Do you think that that reminds you about anybody who was in Lamech's family before him? Well, of course, that's in the line of Cain. Cain was somebody who killed his brother. And so Lamech here, in that same family of Cain, is learning to be just like Cain. And as a matter of fact, he's learning to be worse than Cain was. So we're going to, he was certainly a loudmouth, this guy Lamech. Um, and we're also going to find out how it was that he was forgiving. He was vi unforgiving, excuse me. He was unforgiving, he was violent. And he spoke things against God and against his people. So just to show that, I'm going to read a couple of verses uh, for you. And in particular, I think what we'll do is look at verse um, Hebrews uh, chapter... We're not going to go to Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to go to Jude 14. 
So if you have a look at Jude 14, and you don't have to turn it up because I'm going to read it for you right now. It's really interesting. And this is one of the most amazing things about the Bible. We need, don't ever forget, that we need to have the Old Testament and the New Testament together. We need to understand both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And when we look at Jude, we're actually finding out more um, incredibly interesting and helpful information about what was happening back in Genesis chapter 4 that we were just reading. So in Jude 14, we're going to look at verse uh, 14, 15, um, yes, 14 and 15. So Jude, who's writing um, way, way after, a long time after um, Lamech even lived, but he's talking about the people who lived in Lamech's time. <clears throat> and he says the people that lived in Lamech's time were just like some of the people that were alive in Jude's time. Listen to this. It says, Enoch also, the seventh from Adam. Remember when we looked at the, uh, the chart the other day? Enoch was the seventh from Adam. He prophesied of these people saying, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000s of his saints. And we're looking forward to that time in the future. See, Enoch had the truth all the way back then. He knew that God was going to send someone to judge the world in righteousness. And that's what um, Enoch was saying. He was warning the people, saying that God is going to be coming to judge, just like we say the same thing and believe the same thing today. Well, what is it that God's going to do when he comes? Well, in verse 15, it says, to execute judgment on all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their, now listen to this, all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So that's what Enoch was talking about. He was saying to the people that lived at his time that God is going to come and judge the hard or the harsh speeches. Those things that people were saying against God. God was going to come and judge the people for that. He was warning the people in um, Lamech's day and he's warning the people also in our day. It doesn't mention Lamech by name in Jude, but we know that Enoch was prophesying. He was the seventh from Adam. And remember, when we looked at our chart, we found out that Lamech was the seventh from Adam as well. So it was all during the time of Lamech. And he was known, and lots of the people back then were known for their hard speeches that they spoke against God. They were speaking against God. And we live in a world today where it's, it's the same. Um, we live in a world today where people are speaking against God, saying, that, saying terrible things about God, and even denying that God even exists. So the times that we're living in today are much like the times um, back in the days of Lamech. Now, um, so he was definitely, all those hard speeches uh, that he said to his wife, his wives, and that other people were saying, these were the hard speeches. These were the loud mouths of the day. Now, when we look back at Genesis 4, I want you to come um, and just listen to another verse in Genesis chapter 4. There's one last little verse that we didn't read that we have to read. And look what it says. It says, If Cain, this is, these are the words of Lamech, If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. So remember what happened with Cain. Cain said when he was um, banished, he, he said to God, well, everybody who will find me, they're going to kill me. And God says, I'll put a mark on you so that people know that if they kill you, they will receive judgment from me, God said, seven times worse than what you've been given. And so Lamech knew that story. Everybody would have known that story, that fact that happened to Cain. Um, and what Lamech is saying is that if Cain is going to be avenged seven times by God, Lamech says, I'm going to avenge myself 70 times seven. So he was kind of making him say, like, I'm even more powerful than God. And it also shows that Lamech was not the kind of person to forgive people who did something um, to hurt him or did something wrong to him or something that he thought was wrong to him. He said, I have killed somebody for wounding me. I've slain someone for hurting me. 
And that's not how we're supposed to act. If somebody does something to us, are we supposed to do worse to them than they've done to us? No, but that was the kind of person that Lamech was, speaking against God, speaking against others, and he was a person who was unforgiving and violent. And it was just um, four generations. So Lamech, he, would have, he had kids, grandkids, great-grandkids, and great great grandkids. And in, in the days of the great, great grandkids, um, the earth was so, so filled with violence that God was going to take the people away who were disobedient in a flood. So we have to make sure that that spirit isn't found in us. So we don't want to be unforgiving, loud mouths. We want to be people who the words that they speak are helpful and aren't hurtful to other people. And that's something that we need to remember when we're at CHC for sure um, and when we're outside in the world. We, we speak words of kindness and when we do something wrong, we confess what we did, what we've done. And if something is done wrong to us, we have to forgive because that's the pattern that the Lord Jesus Christ has given to us. And I think we'll leave it there for today. Hope to see you tomorrow.